Good morning, everyone. We'll start today's COVID-19 press briefing with Mayor John Cooper, followed by Dr. Alex Jahangir, Chair of the Metro Board of Health and the Metro Coronavirus Task Force. We are also joined this morning by Hugh Atkins, Environmental Health Bureau Director with the Metro Public Health Department, and Dr. James Heldreth, President and CEO of Meharry Medical College. Director Chief William Swan of the Office of Emergency Management and Nashville Fire Department, and Chief Steve Anderson of the Metro Nashville Police Department are here with us to help answer your questions. We will now begin with Mayor John Cooper. Good morning, Nashville. Now this morning I'm wearing a face mask to demonstrate the importance of wearing this type of protective equipment in public settings where other social distancing measures may be difficult to maintain. Now, let me remove this mask so you can understand me a little more clearly. But this one was made for me by Council Lady Kathleen Murphy in my home district of District 24, and I'm grateful to her for doing this. This weekend, Middle Tennessee experienced fabulous weather, and I'm glad to report that Nashvillians enjoyed the outdoors with widespread compliance to the Safer at Home order. Maintaining safe social distancing when taking walks and enjoying our green spaces and abiding by public health orders. Closing certain metro parks and recreation features. Now as of this morning, our community has reached a sobering milestone of over a thousand confirmed cases of COVID-19 in Davidson County, 1,034 to be exact. Now I want to remind everyone that staying at home, safely enjoying the outdoors while maintaining social distancing measures and only running essential errands are critical in flattening the curve of the coronavirus disease and saving lives. Over the weekend, Metro Public Health and Metro Police continued patrolling and investigating reports of non-compliance. Anyone can report suspected violations of the Safer at Home order, including non-essential business operations and unlawful gatherings, by visiting hub.nashville.gov and dialing 311 from anywhere within Davidson County or downloading the Hub Nashville app. Now this morning I'm glad to report progress with the Music City Alternative Care Site and we're grateful to Governor Lee and the state's COVID-19 Unified Command. In partnership with the state, Dr. Alex Jahanger will be announcing the names of the management team at this important facility. Now in keeping with Nashville's role as a global leader in the healthcare industry, we're grateful to have such an experienced team coming into place. I'd like to thank Dr. James Hildreth, President and CEO of Meharry Medical College, for joining us again this morning to provide his insight into the COVID-19 outbreak. As Dr. Hildreth mentioned on Friday morning, many Nashvillians have been making cloth face coverings for personal use during this coronavirus outbreak. The CDC recommends wearing cloth face coverings in public settings where other social distancing measures may be difficult to maintain, for example, in grocery stores and pharmacies. The CDC also has several guidelines on making and using homemade cloth face coverings, which you can find by visiting covid19.nashville.gov. Your homemade mask should fit snugly but comfortably against the side of the face. Be secured with ties or ear loops. Include multiple layers of fabric and allow for breathing without restriction. And be able to be laundered and machine dried without damage or change to shape. You should routinely wash your cloth face mask in a washing machine. Depending on the frequency of use, be careful not to touch your eyes, nose, and mouth when removing your face covering and wash your hands immediately after removing your mask. I urge everyone to visit covid19.nashville.gov to find these CDC guidelines on the use of cloth masks and to learn how to fashion everyday household items into protective face coverings. For those who are generously making face masks to donate to others, we ask that you drop them off at the Community Resource Center at 218 Omahundro Place, Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. Your donated mask will be distributed to essential personnel who are not healthcare workers or first responders but are nonetheless part of Nashville's citywide COVID-19 response to continue delivering critical services to Davidson County residents. 
Anyone interested in learning how to participate in this important cause can visit covid19.nashville.gov to learn more. Now I'd like to welcome Hugh Atkins, the Environmental Health Bureau Director from the Metro Public Health Department, who is with us this morning to discuss our county-wide Safer at Home enforcement efforts. And once again, I want to remind everyone to visit covid19.nashville.gov to make a contribution as you are able to the COVID-19 Response Fund, which has been established to provide relief to Nashvilleians facing hardships during this time. And residents may also visit our web website to find information on obtaining direct financial food, housing, mental health, social services, unemployment, and utility payment assistance. And now I'll turn it over to uh, Dr. Alex Shahanger, the chair of the Metro Coronavirus Task Force. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Cooper, and good morning, Nashville. Here's the latest information on the COVID-19 virus in our city. As the mayor said, we now have a total of 1,034 confirmed cases with six fatalities here in Davidson County. This is an increase of 110 cases in the past 24 hours. Additionally, there are 1,011 cases confirmed in the Mid-Cumberland region, which includes our surrounding counties. This means there are over 2,000 cases of COVID right here in Middle Tennessee. Of these, there are currently a total of 51 COVID positive patients hospitalized in Nashville hospitals. Of the 1,034 Davidson County residents in cases, 862 cases are self-isolating at home and have mild and manageable symptoms. 129 patients have been cleared. This morning, the community assessment centers are opening to screen residents who think they may have the virus. This is part of our larger community assessment system, which increases our capability to screen residents and conduct more COVID tests. Last week, 1,051 people were assessed in person and 623 tests were conducted. Furthermore, more than 2,000 people called the assessment hotline for guidance regarding this virus. The community assessment system is helping ease the pressure on our hospital systems. If you have symptoms, the very first thing to do is call our hotline at 862-7777. Again, 615-862-7777. These lines are open seven days a week from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. You will be connected to the medical personnel who will answer your questions and determine if you need additional screening. If you do, you will be referred to either your own local healthcare provider or to one of our community assessment centers. As a reminder, the centers are open Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. We also continue to work with the state and our regional healthcare partners on the alternative care site at the Music City Center over the weekend. I'm grateful that the state's unified command has appointed Mr. Jamison Norton as chief administrative officer of this facility. Mr. Norton currently serves as the CEO of the Vanderbilt Psychiatric Hospital and is a former Marine. The chief nursing officer of the site will be Laura Beth Brown, vice president of Vanderbilt Health, Service, Health Services, and the chief medical officer is Dr. Matthew Bachetta, a renowned thoracic surgeon. These individuals have been working tirelessly all weekend, and I know this is a very strong leadership team, and, and I'm grateful to Commissioners um, Piercy and McWhorter for appointing them and look forward to working with this team closely as the project advances. Finally, we are still on the upside of the curve. That means that we'll sadly have more cases and sadly more deaths. Now yesterday, the Surgeon General stated that this will be a tough week for the United States. And I believe in Nashville, the next couple of weeks may also be as tough. But I know we can all get this together, but we all need to be together as we get through it. We really do need to remain vigilant. You know, yesterday, as part of my regular job, I, I, was, I took trauma call. And what my colleagues and I saw were that there were still too many people not adhering to the Safe Red Hol Home order. In fact, most of the surgeries I performed yesterday were on people who were injured doing things that they should have not been involved with if they had followed the order. The decision not to follow the Safe Red at Home order has put additional pressure on our healthcare system, which needs to be focused on combating the virus. So I'm pleading with you, please don't go out unless it's vital. Plan ahead and make less frequent trips. Go out only if it's necessary and think before you step out of your house as to whether or not you really do need to go out. 
and return back home once you're completed with your essential task. Social distancing and staying at home will stop the spread of this virus, but we all must do it together. Tell your friends and family to stay at home. Remember, spread the, ver the word, not the virus. Thank you so much, and I'd like to introduce Dr. Caldwell. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Jahangir. I'm pleased to introduce our Director of Environmental Health Services, Mr. Yu Atkins. Mr. Atkins had previously served as the Tennessee Department of Health Director of Environmental Health Services as well. He joined our department two years ago. He oversees the inspection and licensing of all food and public facilities in Nashville and Davidson County. I have appointed Mr. Atkins as our Department of Public Health's lead enforcement agent for the Safer at Home Order. Mr. Atkins. Thank you. Uh, teams of Metro Public Health Department Environmental Bureau staff and Metro police officers are continuing to respond to complaints of non-essential businesses continuing to operate. These teams of inspectors and officers have visited 62 businesses since last Wednesday, April the 1st. We found that the overwhelming majority of the businesses are complying with the order and then we're finding that some misunderstand the order and once we explain it to it, them are complying. We have asked six businesses to close at our direction, but they were all cooperative, so no citations have been cited to this date. Our teams are going to continue to respond to complaints, and we also conduct unannounced follow-up visits to make sure the bars and other non-essential establishments are following the order once we leave. Our inspectors and the police officers are working alternative shifts to make sure we get coverage during regular business hours and also we can check out complaints late into the night. We will issue citations if a non-essential business such as a bar is operating. If cited, it's a $50 fine for the bar and while that may not seem like much, it's also $50 per head for everybody we find in there when they are operating. We've conducted several site visits this weekend uh, to the big stores with garden centers. The previous weekend, it kind of uh, got out of control at some of those because it was a good spring weekend and people were hitting the garden center. We had a conference call Friday with representatives from those stores and asked them to do a better job with compliance. Uh, uh, we hit every one of those in Nashville this weekend and found an overwhelming number all of them in compliance and doing a really good job with controlling the crowds and social distancing. Enforcing this safer at home order is essential to reducing the potential spread of the virus and if you want to submit a complaint about a business in Nashville you can visit the covid19.nashville.gov website. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, now, Dr. James Hild Hildreth, uh, President and CEO of M Meharry Me Medical College, will come up and address us. Good morning, Nashville. Spring has sprung, and pollens are in the air, and that makes this a very difficult time for people who suffer from allergies. And I've been asked many times over the last couple of weeks. How does one distinguish the symptoms of allergies from those of COVID-19? Allergies are a result of a special kind of immune response called a hypersensitivity reaction. Allergers, allerg people who suffer from allergies at some point in their lives, they ingest the pollens, they get into the stomach, they're broken down into proteins, we make an immune response to those proteins, and included in the immune response are proteins called IgE antibodies. IgE antibodies are special because they bind to cells in our nasal cavity, in our sinuses, and our trachea called mast cells and basophils. And the mast cells and basophils are guardians of our airways. 
They're meant to keep things from getting into our lungs that don't belong there. So when pollen proteins bind to the IgE on the surface of the mast cells and basophils, these cells release chemicals that cause the symptoms that we're all so familiar with. One of those chemicals that's made in abundance is histamine. And that's why antihistamines are a common way to treat people who suffer from allergies. Allergies and reactions can happen within minutes, and they're not contagious. And that's unlike COVID-19, which, as you know, is caused by a virus, which is highly contagious. And since the virus is replicating in the lower part of our lungs, that is why the symptoms may take days to occur, as opposed to allergies, which can happen within minutes. The most common symptoms of allergies are a runny nose, itchy throat, itchy eyes, ear canals can itch, and we also can get congestion in our ears, as well as post-nasal post drainage, known as post-nasal drip. These symptoms are all part of the hypersensitivity response, and they're all caused by those chemicals released by the guard cells. By contrast, COVID-19 primarily occurs in the lower airways, and the symptoms we see reflect the immune response to the virus infection. Those symptoms, as you heard, are dry cough, fever, and difficulty breathing. A large study in London recently released shows that another symptom should be looked for, and that is the loss of the sense of smell and taste. If you lose your sense of smell and taste, that might be a strong indication that you need to self-isolate, then by all means call your physician or your healthcare provider to get directions. Call the COVID-19 hotline. People who suffer from allergies tend to have a specific pattern of symptoms year after year. So if your symptoms differ greatly from what they usually are, that might be another indication you need to contact your health care provider or call the COVID-19 hotline. And by all means, if you're suffering from extreme symptoms, including chest pain or pressure in the chest, extreme difficulty breathing, or your lips or fingers start to turn blue, you need to call 911 and get emergency attention right away. Now consider this, Nashville. Last December, a little more than four months, a little less than four months ago, a man went to a food market, an outdoor market, to get food, something he had probably done many, many times before. He could not possibly have known that on this particular day, interactions with some animal or some food might have given him an infection that caused him to become the index for the COVID-19 pandemic. And here we are, a short time later, 1.3 million people have been infected, over 70,000 people have died, and the world has been turned upside down. This man surely did not know that doing something as routine as going to a market and purchasing food could cause a catastrophe at this, in this dimension. I'm sure if he had known, he could have been persuaded to stay home that day to save those 70,000 lives, save the global econ economy, and keep us living the lifestyle that we've all become accustomed to. But here's the difference, Nashville. Unlike that man, we do know. We do know that staying home will save lives, staying home will flatten the curve, and staying home will get us back to a new normal much faster than if we don't stay home and comply with the Safer at Home order. And as I shared with you before, there is strong evidence now, very compelling evidence, that this virus can be transmitted by the simple act of speaking to someone who exhales the virus and we breathe it in. And this person may have no awareness that they're even infected and capable of spreading the virus. And that's why at this stage in the pandemic, we are all being asked to wear face coverings when we cannot maintain the social distancing when we have to go out. And as a reminder, you should only go out if you have to go out, but when you do, and you can't maintain the social distancing, a face covering will help us put an end to this. You probably read and heard that they're not as protective as an N95 mask, and that may well be true, but they will definitely reduce the risk of transmission. And at this point, any and everything we can do to do that is required of us. So I want to emphasize something the mayor told you that if you wear a face covering, and if it does what it's supposed to do, there may well be virus on the outside surface of it. 
So the first thing you should do when you take it off and avoid touching the front of it is to wash your hands. And please make it out of something that can be laundered and dried in the dryer. If you're going to reuse it over and over again, it must be kept clean. So please wash your hands when you remove it. Make it out of something that can be washed with soap and water and dried. And that's not relieving us from staying at home. But if you have to go out, please wear a face covering. But we're all safer if we stay at home and flatten the curves to give our health care workers a chance to save those who need their help. They're staying at work for us. We need to stay at home for them. So please, Nashville, we've got this. Stay at home, be safe at home, and help us get the virus behind us. Now, some of you may have read about making masks, and I just want to show you how simple it is. Mine is made from an old T-shirt. You basically cut six inches from the bottom of the T-shirt. You take two scrunchies. You slide those down. I'm sorry. <laughs> you slide those down to get the appropriate length, like I've done here. You fold it. So you now have four layers of fabric between you and what's out there. And you simply then do this. Sorry. Now, you have Spock ears. You know about Spock, right? You have Vulcan ears. <laughs> you have Vulcan ears, that's what I'm trying to say. But you'll be protected. And it takes about 30 seconds to do this. All of us probably have some old T-shirts laying around. If you just take two rubber straps like this, you can see how easy it is. In less than a minute, you can make a face covering and protect yourselves. Thank you, Nashville. Thank you, Dr. Hildreth. <clears throat> Live long and prosper. We will now start the Q&A portion of today's briefing. I will now announce your name from the podium, and you may proceed by asking your question over the air. Let's start with Jeremy Finley at News 4. Good morning, everybody. Thanks again for the update. I uh, wanted to ask first of the six businesses um, that were closed down, uh, we'd like to get the names of those businesses but also what they, if you could tell us what kinds of businesses they were, were they bars, were they restaurants, or were they? And then I also wanted to ask if um, any gatherings or homes of, of people, if you guys have had to go to people's houses for parties or large gatherings or anything like that and talk to them about, uh, you know, anything like violating the, uh, the order. Thanks. Mr. Atkins. Yes, the, the six businesses that we closed, in general, uh, a couple uh, places that were competitors, one another, uh, large chain craft stores. We had a vape shop, and um, so that's like three of them. We had, uh, well, two each of those times, so they were like the same franchise, uh, two locations each. As far as uh, we have had some uh, notifications of youth playing basketball at the parks, and we've referred those to Metro Parks for uh, enforcement. We did work one this weekend where a neighborhood uh, condominium association park was uh, several youths involved in a basketball game there. We went by, but while we were there, uh, they were gone, so uh, we sort of flagged that one for a follow-up, and we'll go back by to see. So um, those six places um, are on our uh, in our database, but uh, I don't have those with me here. Tosin Fakile, you're on the air. Hi, good morning. Um, hi, good morning. Um, doesn't, doesn't, we're having a little trouble with your audio. Um, we're going to come back to you. Uh, and we have uh, Julia Palazzo. Hi, good morning. Uh, Dr. Jahanger, you mentioned that a lot of progress uh, at the Music City Center was this weekend. Do you mind just telling us a little bit more about what was accomplished 
um, if a procedure has been figured out, like when people enter, is there going to be questioning, screening type thing, and also have you received a large response from medical personnel willing to help staff the facility? Thank you. Thank you for the question. I mean, the, the biggest thing that was accomplished is now you have a team of very seasoned executives who are thinking about this 24-7 who are there. Um, the state is, is, is in charge of staffing. I, I believe they have received um, people, that, um, volunteers and, and others, and they're looking at other staffing models. I defer to the state for that question. Um, there is a link on the COVID-19 on national.gov page to the state side if anyone is interested in, in um, signing up to be considered as part of um, staff for this facility. So that's a really important thing. Um, as far as procedures and protocols, from my understanding is that's something that's going to be ongoing and developing. Um, again, these individuals literally were named Friday night um, and they've been, they were hit the ground running Saturday morning and yesterday and they're there today. Um, so I can't answer any of specific questions or protocols. I know that's something on their list of things to get through. So thank you. Let's go back to Tozen Fakile at uh, News 4. Thank you. Good morning. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Go ahead, Tosin. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Can you hear us? Okay. Thank you. Um, two questions. The first is, um, do we have enough PPE and stuff for um, law enforcement um, since they're doing, you know, just their regular job and make enforcing the safer at home order? Do we have enough PPE for them? And are we worried about burnout for law enforcement folks? And my second question is for the music center um do we know when the transformation of that space will begin and if you guys have enough ppe for the healthcare workers you plan to have working there we'll start with dr john gear I'll, I'll just start with the second part um since i'm closer to the camera um the the timeline for for when the facility will be built um I know they're working on it, and, and my understanding is there, it's going to happen in time with the peak. I'll uh, defer to the Unified Command to answer that, that details specifically. And Chief Anderson, do you want to speak about law enforcement? Um, and regarding supplies and all that for the Music City Center, um, again, I know that's something that's very top of mind for that group. So, As uh, to the protective equipment for our officers, uh, we do have an adequate uh, supply at this, at this point. I do concern myself uh, about the future, uh, the next few weeks, making sure that uh, uh, we keep that adequate amount. Uh, burnout, uh, yes, that's something I'm very concerned about. Uh, checking in with our officers, uh, making sure they get plenty of rest, uh, making sure that they stay isolated. Uh, but uh, to date, uh, uh, we have no issues of uh, officers uh, feeling that at this point. I'm sure that they're feeling the everyday stress that uh, all of us feel. But uh, so far, so good. So thank you. There are no more media questions at this time. A recording of this press briefing will be made available later this morning. Thank you for joining us. This concludes today's Metro COVID-19 press briefing. This has been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. If you would like to see this presentation again, or for more information about this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.